it's your man Kobe. Welcome to the Digital Dash, where I'll be giving you tips on how to market your songs and get those numbers booming. Now today, what I want to talk with you about is a really toxic mindset that I've noticed that some artists have. Now, it's not all artists, but it's enough artists that I feel like I need to make a video to address it. And if you are someone that thinks this way, if it's someone that really has this mindset, you really think this way, hopefully this video convinces you to think differently so you can start to advance so you can start to move on but before we get into all of that come and follow me on instagram i make sure to put my ad name on the screen come talk to me come engage with me come give me some video ideas all of that good stuff now with that being said let's get right into it so i'm sure you're thinking Corey, what are you talking about what mindset is so important that you felt like you needed to make an entire video about it and that mindset is that marketing is cheating. Now, what inspired this video was pretty much a comment that was left underneath one of my ads on Instagram. The comment said something along the lines of like, as an artist, you should just be able to put your music out and the cream should rise to the top. Something like that. Not those exact words, but pretty much the sentiments were that an artist should be able to just put their music out and any artist that actively works to promote his or her music is in fact cheating the game and cheating the system. And it sounds crazy, sounds wild, but that's not the first time that I've heard an artist say, those exact things that's not the first time that i've talked to artists spoken to artists or in some way shape or form seeing artists commenting on the fact that those who are promoting their music they feel like they're cheating like they're not doing it the right way the fair way and if i do nothing else by the end of this video nothing else i hope that this video can debunk those who think that way and hopefully change your minds if you are an artist who thinks that way so that you can start getting your music out there and finally start to get fans and get people to know about you now the first reason why this is a crazy idea is that businesses need to market and you may be wondering what does that have to do with you as an artist now me and sean preach on this channel all the time that artists are no different than businesses you're no different than a mcdonald's you're no different than a home depot you're no different than the starbucks you should be operating your career your artistry just like a CEO will run their business. And with that being said, there's no business in the history of successful business that has been able to make it without letting the world know that they exist. Because that's pretty much what marketing is doing. You are letting your potential customer base know that you or your product exists so they can make the conscious effort to come and buy or interact or partake in whatever it is that you're pushing to them. And we all know that no business can survive without a customer base. And if you're not doing anything to pull in new fans or potential supporters, then your business will start to grow stagnant. You will not be able to progress and you will not be able to grow as an artist or as a business. Now, the second reason on why you shouldn't feel like marketing is cheating is that major artists market, major label artists, all of those top artists who are dominating the charts right now all think of creative marketing plans for their project to get themselves in front of their fan base and new potential fans. And the best example I can think of right now is if you remember earlier this year, earlier this year of 2019 to be making this video, DJ Khaled and Tyler the Creator had a small beef over Tyler the Creator's album outselling DJ Khaled. Now, the reason that DJ Khaled was so upset is that he spent, I think the number he said was $5 million to make and promote his album, The Father of Asad. Now, I'm sure a large part of that budget went into buying the features and paying for the instrumentals that were on the project, but I'm still willing to bet that he spent a couple of hundred thousand dollars marketing that album, doing different ads and sponsorship deals and things that he could do to get the album out there. Now, I say this to say, if the major artists are dominating this space, right, and then you have the artists who are here who may not be major artists yet, they're not superstars, but they're rising, and then you have the artists that are trying to break into the middle tier, if all of those artists understand that marketing is an essential tool to growing themselves out. What would make you, the artist who has yet to break into those tiers, feel like you don't need to do the same thing in order to keep going to the next level? And another personal example I can give, or a pseudo personal example, is a few months ago, I was working on an influencer campaign for a client. I reached out to this influencer. We talk about the campaign, the details, the payment, all that stuff. And then he ghosts me for about three or four days. Just don't hear back from him. He doesn't respond to my texts. He doesn't respond to my emails. Out of the blue, he calls me and he gives me the whole, Yo, bro, my bad, man. We were working on an influencer campaign for Chris Brown and Drake. Chris Brown and Drake have this new song coming out. And it's the single they have going right now. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But whatever song they have on the radio right now, it was for that song. And in that point, I remember asking him, yo, did you do this for Drake off the strength? Or did he treat you? Or did you treat him just like you treated me? Like you charge him and everything. And the influencer's manager told me that they probably would have done it for Drake for free. 
But Drake respected their business enough to just treat it as a part of his marketing plan and pay them the way they should be paid. And that made me think like, man, if Drake and Chris Brown, two of the biggest artists in the world, two, arguably two of the biggest artists ever, have to sit down and figure out marketing plans to get themselves out, why would any other artist feel differently? And the third reason why you the artist should never feel like marketing is cheating is that you need a way to stand above the noise because there's a lot of noise in the music industry. Now, it was reported earlier this year, I think April, April of 2019, um, Daniel Ek, the creator of Spotify, reported that there are about 40,000 uploads to Spotify every single day. So every single day, 40,000 artists put their music onto Spotify. That is not including any additional promo that they're doing to reach their targeted fan base and new fans. And just another statistic to throw out there is, I think it's reported that the average person sees about 5,000 ads a day. So I say this to say again, there is a lot of noise in the music industry and there's a lot of noise within music in general. Meaning that if you do not have a game plan on how to cut through this noise so that people can find you, then you're essentially setting yourself up to not even be discovered and given the chance to compete with these artists that are out here. And kind of going back to my point about the major artists who market as well, right? They also generate a lot of noise. They generate a lot of noise because they dominate most of the major outlets. And in the end, that is who you are competing against. You are competing against Drake. You are competing against Rihanna. You are competing against Call of the Friend. You are competing against your friend who makes music down the street. And you are also competing against that Coca-Cola ad, that Snapchat ad, that Facebook ad that's trying to sell me cologne or stickers or something. This is your competition. This is what you are trying to pull my attention away from to come and listen to your music. And without a strong marketing and content plan, to overcome all of this, you will simply get buried underneath the noise. No one will listen to your music and you will be disappointed. That's the best way to put it. So there you have it. Those are my three reasons on why if you are an artist who feels like marketing is cheating for whatever reason, please don't rewind this video if you need to, rewatch them again and stop thinking that way. Because remember, there is a lot of noise in the music industry. And at the end of the day, you are competing with these bigger artists who make a lot of noise and you're competing with consumers' attention spans, which is very finite, very limited, and it's already being competed for by a lot of outside sources. And if you are an artist who is not even giving themselves a fair chance of having their art expressed and seen and possibly liked, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's, it's, it's just a completely wrong way of thinking. Please get out of that mindset. Now, I would love to hear what you think on this topic. Do you agree with that comment underneath my post? Should artists not have to market their music? Should you just be able to drop it and let it speak for itself? Or am I right and you would pretty much be doing yourself a disservice by not marketing your music and not trying to cut above the noise? Let me know what you think in the comment section below or on Instagram, or on Twitter, wherever you feel like it. Now, as always, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you to miss anything. And as always, my name is Corey, and I'll see you next time.